What's good everybody, it's your boy Patrick and in today's video we have a good one because today I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to bulk or how to actually properly do a massing phase which is where you're gonna get majority of your growth. A lot of people think you don't need a bulk. I'm here to tell you if you're not a genetic freak, unfortunately you, you do. And a lot of people think six month bulk is gonna get it done. That is not the case. You're gonna to have to be pushing food for a long time if you really wanna grow. And people think if you push food for a long time, you're gonna get fat. But I have a new way of bulking that a lot of people don't really know and that's worked really well for me the last two years. It allows you to bulk for a long time without getting really fat. So I'm gonna cover exactly how we do that in this video and how you're gonna keep the body fat off when you're bulking and you're gonna promote muscle gain instead of just gaining tons of slabs of body fat and not a lot of muscle like most people do. So get a, get a snack, get your next meal since you're bulking and let's get into the video. Someone left me a nice juicy sweat mark, so I have to clean that up. Okay, so the most important thing that a lot of people kind of underestimate is how long you're gonna need to bulk or go out doing a massing phase. A lot of people think a six, seven, eight month bulk is gonna cut it, but realistically it's not. They just overestimate the amount of muscle they can gain. At max, if you're past your newbie gain stage, you're probably only gonna gain half a pound of muscle a month. So if we put that out over a year period, right, that's only like six pounds of muscle. So if you're cutting your bulk to like six months or four months or three months, then you really, you're only taking like two two max three pounds of muscle and it's really not going to change your physique that much that's why a lot of people go through like a short bulk like six months get fat think they gain 10 pounds of muscle cut down and they look the exact same as they did before so the first thing to assess is how long you're actually going to need to bulk for most people that's going to be 12 months plus Beginner weight feels heavy. I think that means it's deload time. I don't know. Okay, the second thing that's gonna be the most important is gonna be your mindset going into the bulk. A lot of people don't have the proper mindset. They think, okay, just gain body fat, I'll get bigger, I'll gain muscle. You have to go into the mindset of food, not being food anymore, but food being fuel. So just as hard as you're force feeding and you know not skipping any meals and hitting all your macros and eating more than your body wants to, you have to have that same mindset when you come into the gym. If you really wanna grow muscle, you have to push yourself to the limits that you don't think you can, that your brain's telling you you can't. You just have to push past that and go in with the mentality that I have more fuel, meaning I can give more output, I can push harder. People just think, okay, I'll just eat in a surplus and I'll magically gain muscle. But without the proper training and without you actually pushing Pushing it, that fuel, not food, that fuel is not gonna go to good use. I'm gonna explain to you now how to actually bulk for a long time and not get fat. It all matters on the size of our calorie surplus, right? I recommend a 200 to 300 calorie surplus, but what a lot of people fail to do is they keep that 200 to 300 surplus constant throughout. That's how you just continuously gain body fat even when you don't need to. So a lot of people take the wrong approach by tracking their bulk based on their weight on the scale. You don't wanna do that. Because by that metric, you're gonna keep gaining body weight, but it's all gonna be fat and it's not gonna be as much muscle as it could be. And this is why you're not gonna be able to bulk for a long time because you're gonna continuously be gaining fat. What you actually wanna do and the metric you wanna use for 
um, tracking if you're actually gaining is this, your logbook, okay? You need to be tracking your workouts. We're gonna go back to the analogy of food being fuel, okay? Picture yourself like a car. Let's say you're in a calorie surplus, okay? Your, your tank is full, your gas tank is full, you're pouring the calorie surplus in, right? Now, if you continue on a calorie surplus and keep adding food every time your weight plateaus, that's like having a full tank of gas in your car and you continue to pour fuel on top of that, right? You put more gas in your car. What's gonna happen? Is your car gonna use that gas or is it gonna overfill, right? It's not gonna be used, it's gonna overfill. So you need to add a calorie surplus, right? You gain an initial amount of body weight. Then once you stop gaining body weight in that first calorie surplus, you maintain that body composition, okay? It's gonna be higher calories, that's okay. You're gonna maintain that body weight. You're gonna be tracking your workouts, right? You're gonna keep tracking your workouts and you're gonna keep progressing in the gym now this is the key part that a lot of people mess up on once your gym progress right your your workouts stop progressing that's when you add more food so you only add more food or more fuel once the workouts stop progressing okay so this is gonna be your main method of tracking your progress in your book So I hope that little explanation made sense with the car analogy, but basically the principle is you only add more food or more fuel when you need to. This is what's gonna allow you to bulk for 12 months, 16 months, and not just continuously gain fat for no reason like most people do. So once your training plateaus, then you add more food, and then you just rinse and repeat that cycle, right? You don't need to be adding calories when your body doesn't need to. When your training is progressing, you're good at that body composition. It's only when your training stops progressing, when you need to gain more body fat, add more calorie surplus, and add more fuel to that fire or fuel to your gas. Another really good reason why we want to use our training and our logbook as the model for progression and not our physique is because you all know when you gain body fat, it's uncomfortable, right? You look in the mirror, you look worse, less definition, probably less pump, you know, less abs, all that stuff. So you're actually going to be slightly looking worse as your bulk continues which is why it's really gonna help your body is more feel and your brain if you're constantly progressing in your lifts it's gonna constantly reaffirm yourself you're on the right track even though judging in the mirror it's gonna tell you yo you're going backwards right you're gonna think stop this I'm looking worse it's not working but that's why you're gonna have your training and your logbook to tell you no look at what we can lift now with the same technique and same form versus what we could lift you know 10 pounds later 20 pounds later one month ago two months ago it's constantly gonna reaffirm yourself this is the right thing to do this is how you progress and you actually gain gaining muscle and moving in the right direction. Okay, so I covered what, what to do and how to do it. Now I'm gonna just cover one common mistake that I see, which is a dirty bulk. And a lot of people think, uh, don't do a dirty bulk, but they don't know why. They just think not to do it. So then when there's like an opportunity where they can have like a cheat meal or like some random calories, or they just eat off plan just to fill their calories and get the calorie needs. The reason why you don't want a dirty bulk is because as we know, the only purpose of a bulk or a calorie surplus is to add more fuel and recover better and train harder, right? So the only foods that are gonna allow us to do that, which is the purpose of the bulk, is gonna be like, you know, clean and very nutritious and high macro friendly foods, you know, high carb, high protein, all that stuff. And obviously you need your fats in there. But so that's why doing a dirty bulk doesn't really make a lot of sense because those foods, and even though you are getting the calories in, it's gonna contribute more to fat gain than more to recovery and 
training capabilities. So that's why it doesn't really make sense to do it add in dirty calories or dirty bulk, just because even though the calories might equate to the same, the nutritional value of the food isn't, where it's not gonna contribute to your recovery from your training and your ability to push training further, which is the whole point of the bulk in the first place. So it's gonna be kind of counterintuitive. Okay, and the last point, if you're gonna bulk for like a long time, I know it's like the common thing, but body dysmorphia and having the mentality. If you wanna do this and you seriously wanna put on size, you gotta understand you're not gonna look good for 12 months. It's unfortunate, but that's just kinda like the reality of it. If you don't really care about how quick you gain muscle, you can do the whole main gain thing. You can look lean year round and really not gain any size. But if you do wanna make a substantial difference to your physique, this is just one of the uncomfortable truths. You can be like me and just get an oversized dress and then you never have to see your physique for 12 months or you can just deal with it, you know, go back to your logbook when you're feeling sad, realize that you're moving in the right direction, have the bigger picture, delayed gratification, all those things that build you, build your character, right? So it's a good thing really if you can put up with it and, you know, think positive even when you're not looking the best, but you are going to be performing your best, which is the main thing. And that's pretty much it for how to bulk successfully for a long period of time, keep the fat off and promote muscle. That's pretty much gonna wrap it up on this video. I know a lot of you probably follow me because I feel like I built my following mostly on bulking just because you know me, a skinny kid growing up and like just kind of teaching people how to bulk and how to grow and how to change from being super skinny. So this is probably right down the alley of a lot of you guys because that's what you follow me for, how to go from skinny to you know big, even though I'm not big, but anyway. Um, but yeah, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Um, showed you guys how to bulk, how to bulk properly, what I've been doing the last 12 months, seen amazing results with it, and what I'm going to continue to do is pretty much what I outlined in this video for the next 12 or so months before we do compete in a bodybuilding show. But yeah, the videos are gonna be a little bit more spaced out starting now just because um, I restarted school, I'm in my last year though, so once we're done with that, we can get back onto, you know, um, the documenting the series for like doing a competition and all that stuff but just for the time being just because of how busy um, me and my cameraman are we're gonna have to just do these kind of informative videos which end up doing well in the long run just because you know people are always looking for these tips so subscribe and like the video um, if you did enjoy it and there's gonna be more videos like this style coming forward so catch you guys in the next one peace